shortly after uh, Panama, I, I went to 1st Battalion as the operations officer, and uh, Colonel Wagner was the battalion commander at the time, and um, as um, Desert Storm kicked off, it became apparent um, that um, there would be need for special operations elements. Uh, and as the mission became further defined, what really became the focus of the mission was to, as part of the Joint Special Operations Command, uh, a, a small ranger element to deploy with, with them to conduct raids uh, essentially deep into Iraq to support and to also interdict Scud missiles that the Iraqi forces were launching out of western Iraq into Kuwait. But there was a, a, a major concern that they were going to increase the frequency of those and actually launch them in, uh, against Israel, bringing uh, the Israelis into the conflict, of course, which is not something uh, from a strategic perspective that we wanted, uh, the coalition wanted to have happen at the time. So our mission and the Joint Special Operations mission was really focused around uh, interdicting and preventing Scud missiles from disrupting the coalition operations, uh, both from out of Kuwait, uh, uh, as well as uh, preventing them from uh, being able to uh, launch Scud missiles into Israel. So we rehearsed a number of operations. We principally spent a lot of time as a quick reaction force for other uh, special op small special operation units that were operating deep uh, in Iraq at the time to interdict these forces. But one of the things that became apparent is the communication architecture that the Iraqi forces had that were controlling these Scud missiles. We had identified some fairly large uh, uh, cellular or uh, radio relay towers that they had. So General Downing, who was the commander of Joint Special Operations Command at the time of the overall uh, joint effort from a special operations perspective, the one raid that we did conduct uh, uh, in Iraq was to take down a major radio relay tower that was right on the border with Jordan inside Iraq. So it was uh, supported by 160th, of course, doing a deep penetration raid. We uh, knew that there was most likely some air defense forces around the area and probably on the site uh, a few forces, but not many. So. At the time when we deployed the Rangers to Desert Storm, at the time we only took a, a very small command and control element. I was the S3, so I went with about 10 people from the uh, 1st Ranger Battalion staff. The regiment sent a few folks with them. One of them was a captain, Captain Dan Allen. He'd already commanded a company in 1st Ranger Battalion during, Desert, uh, during a Just Cause. He was now at the regimental headquarters as a... Uh, operations officer, so he came back down and was my operations officer for this operation. And then we had a company, a B Company, which was commanded by Captain Kurt Fuller, who retired as Major General Kurt Fuller. And we had a, um, a, comp a platoon from A Company. The first sergeant of that uh, company, although he didn't deploy, was uh, First Sergeant Mike Hall. Uh, so you see a lot of familiar names here, and there were a lot of other, you know, young squad leaders who were part of that uh, operation who went on to, to uh, do great things in our Army and our regiment. We were there from, uh, uh, from about February to late April, and really, I think, from a strategic perspective, we really kept the Iraqis uh, on their heels and, and unable to really uh, do any strategic or operational damage to the coalition using, in any big way, using their government. They were unable to draw the Israelis into the conflict, of course. And we were a small, uh, but I think a very important part of that. I stayed in 1st Ranger Battalion and uh, became the uh, XO at the time. Uh, and as always, we uh, kept training for uh, different operations. The next major operation that we did was General Grange was the regimental commander at the time. And there was a sense that, um, uh, that we needed to uh, demonstrate our ability as a, as a military to deploy back to Kuwait rapidly in case uh, Saddam decided to take some action and, and retribution because 
Uh, obviously, we stopped short of going uh, deep into Iraq at the time. We hadn't completely, obviously, eliminated a lot of his uh, military capability. So General Grange and the uh, chairman of the Joint Chiefs uh, initiated a, a readiness exercise and that where uh, 1st Ranger Battalion was received a no-notice alert, and essentially in 18 hours we deployed with all of our combat equipment, live ammunition. At that time, uh, Cur uh, Colonel Ken Stouse was a battalion commander, and we made an 18-hour flight to Kuwait, air refueled en route, and uh, jumped out on a uh, essentially a, a uh, airfield in the area, did a 25-mile road march, did a live fire on the ground, and then a day later deployed back. And I think that was a, another uh, a major operation in terms of demonstrating uh, the, the capability of the regiment to really demonstrate deterrence around the world uh, when, the, when, it, when it's needed.